The other story I can tell you is um, when we finished constructing the digital archive uh, after we got the IRB uh, approval, we had to <laughs> seed the collection with, or the archive with certain collections of narratives so that there'd be something there for people to look at. It wouldn't be just like an empty bucket, right? And so um, my idea would be to go to scholars that I knew, Brenda Brueggemann, Beverly Moss. I went to Brenda and I asked her if we could do um, deaf and hard of hearing uh, citizens and if she'd help us with that effort, which we did. It's a, still a collection in the digital archive and a, it's used all the time by people because it's, uh, it includes uh, not only the question, the interviewer plus the um, participant, but a translator, a sign, signer and translator, uh, and there's simultaneously voice and signing. So that was a terrific exercise for us. We learned a lot about how different populations um, need to be uh, accommodated with both the technology and the setting and the, you know, what different kinds of questions that prompted, what kinds of involvement that prompted, who might be involved, how we might go about doing it. And then the second question, the second incident was when um, I went to Beverly Moss and I um, thought we should do uh, black women academics because Jackie Jones Royster was here, Valerie Lee was here, there were many people I knew would be terrific participants. Um, and so I started this effort by sending out an email um, to all of the black women academics on the campus that I knew. Um, and I sent out this email asking for their involvement and I didn't get a single blessed email back, none, zero. I was, it was busted, it was nothing. I got nothing back. And I was just discouraged and I went over to Bev's office, her office is right down the hall and I said, Bev, you know, what's happening here? What, what is happening here? And she was very patient in explaining to me how often these women were approached um, because they are in a sense so rare within the academy, um, so rare within our culture in some regards. Uh, so many duties and obligations devolve uh, to them and uh, they have so much on their plate and they um, for good reason don't trust all the people who come to them asking uh, for involvement um, for very good reason. Uh, and so um, Beverly schooled me a bit on that and uh, with uh, great kindness and generosity and then she sent out uh, a similar email <laughs> message and within like two minutes got Back, all sorts of responses and as a team we went back and we interviewed people um, sometimes in groups sometimes alone black women academics and uh, had another population with which to seed the DALN so I learned a lot from Beverly and from Brenda about what it takes to actually carry through in a project like this and how different populations um, will approach the task of telling a story and thinking about what it means to tell a story uh, in very different ways and that the DALN had to be, had to not just accommodate but seek all those different voices and be ready to, um, to adjust its practices and its uh, collection efforts and its um, the, the whole project to all those different voices because every single voice that we listened to had something unique to tell us about literacy.